So what's wrong with self-care? Well, honestly nothing. There's nothing wrong with this perk intrinsically and actually it's a pretty decent perk especially if you're just starting out the game. Especially because it gives you that chance to always heal yourself even if you can't find another teammate which is pretty nice. But recently I had a video where I was ranking the teachable perks of each survivor and I ended up ranking Claudette a little bit lower because I didn't really like self-care that much and I saw this comment from Max. I believe it was on the tier list video but if I'm mistaken I'm sorry but I actually thought that this was a pretty interesting topic to make into a video not only explaining my reasoning for generally not using self-care but also explaining some of the alternatives that you can use and I think that this is probably especially important for newer players who just see self-care and they want to take it almost every game and again I'm definitely not telling you to not use self-care at all I just want to explain some of the other things that you can do to get heals and also my personal reason for not really using it anymore. So first up some quick backstory on this perk. It used to easily be one of the strongest perks in the game. It was pretty much guaranteed to be in almost any build on a survivor and if you've seen some of my previous builds then you know that I don't like taking the same set of perks every game but honestly at that point in the game self care was so strong that it was really hard to argue not having it in your kit. Kind of like how Hex ruin is for killers right now well originally when you use self-care it actually healed just as fast as another teammate could heal you but since then it has actually been cut in half so it's half as efficient as a heal from another teammate and since a standard heal takes about 16 seconds that would make a self-care heal 32 seconds unless it's being modified by some other effects. So that right there is a big part of the reason that I don't like using self-care anymore. Literally a 32 second heal is just so inefficient for your team. That is 32 seconds that you're not spending on a generator and generators take about 80 seconds to complete when you're by yourself and take approximately 45 seconds when you have just one other teammate working on him with you so you can see how much time that you're sacrificing when you're just spending it self-caring. However, a lot of the times when you have a killer that is hitting you and then walking away a ton, it's actually pretty valuable because you can just heal yourself a ton of times and you're not dependent on finding your teammates to get another heal. But this is where my second issue with the perk comes in is that it's just kind of boring. It's basically just another excuse to hold M1 and wait for yourself to be healed and it's just not that interactive or interesting. So I would say my main two reasons for generally not using it anymore are just the fact that it's kind of boring and it's a little time inefficient. Especially when the killer is running things like Thanatophobia and Sloppy Butcher, the heals can be very very slow. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of your alternatives for self-healing because there are actually a ton now in the game. First up, there are medkits, which is a pretty obvious one. You can bring in a medkit for yourself, and you can even stack it with a perk like Botany Knowledge. This is a very straightforward way to bring in a self-heal for yourself without using self-care. And you can even use it for unselfish reasons for healing other people because those healing speeds have been increased a ton in patch 3.3. Overall this is a very obvious and very solid way to get self heals out. And as far as add-ons, if you're not running self-care, I would generally recommend the ones that add charges to your medkit because you're more likely to get more heals off. And of course, you can use perks again like Botany Knowledge or Streetwise to increase the efficiency and get more total heals, but that's just something to consider. Next, something that might be slightly less obvious to people who are a little bit new to the game are the aura reading perks. So essentially any perk that allows you to see one of your teammates to any degree will give you a beacon that you can go to for a heal. This could be bond, this could be empathy or aftercare. There's also add-ons to the key that allow you to see other survivors or see the obsession constantly. And these will always give you a reliable backup plan for finding another survivor when you need a heal. Plus, you get to enjoy all of the effects of the aura reading, which is really nice. Tracking other survivors can often be very helpful, especially when you're in a solo queue game. You also have the option of using Second Wind. While it's not one of my personal favorites, it does have an interesting effect, where essentially if you heal one survivor for a full health state, then the next time you are hooked and then unhooked, then you will passively heal over 30 seconds. And even though this heal time is pretty slow, I would say the best thing about it is the fact that it's passive. So once you're unhooked, you and your teammates don't actually need to worry about healing you. 
It'll just happen passively over time, which is a nice time saver. I will also quickly mention Solidarity, which will passively heal you a little bit once you're healing somebody else. That is, if you're injured, of course. However, I just don't think this perk is very good right now, so I can't really recommend running it. It's just something that does heal you. Next up, let's talk about Inner Strength, which is actually one of my favorite perks. The way this works is basically you will go break a totem, and then once you've broken a totem, if you're in the injured state, you can enter a locker, and over 8 seconds you will be healed fully. So the nice thing about this is pretty obvious that that heal is very fast. However, when you factor in cleansing the totem, then that is actually an extra 14 seconds, which means ultimately the heal of this perk would be about 22 seconds total when you factor everything in. So that heal time altogether is not amazing, but the nice thing about it is that you can use inner strength ahead of time by cleansing a totem before you're injured, and then just step into a locker whenever you are injured and get a pretty quick heal. Also, you're definitely getting value out of cleansing the totems. You're guaranteed to get at least a thousand points from cleansing a totem, and it also makes you search for things, which I would argue is one of the more interesting ways to get a heal. Plus, if you're lucky enough to find a Hex Totem like Hex Ruin or Devour Hope, you get a lot of efficiency out of doing this. Plus, the perk synchronizes really well with other perks like Quick and Quiet and Head On, so I'm just a huge fan of this one. After that, we have Pharmacy, which a few patches ago some people might have laughed at, but actually after patch 3.3, it's a lot better than it used to be because they've increased the self-heal rate of the emergency medkit, the green medkit, and now by far this is one of the fastest self-heals that you can get in the game. Plus, Pharmacy itself also speeds up the rate that you search through a chest, so overall this is a pretty fast and efficient heal. The main issue that I find with this perk is that typically I want to actually keep the green medkits after I use them, and unfortunately right now the green medkits only have 16 charges, which is just enough to get a single full heal off on yourself unless you get a greater skill check. So basically you're guaranteed to lose the item unless you get a greater skill check, which doesn't happen that often because the heal is so fast. So I think if you are to run Pharmacy, I would probably recommend running Botany Knowledge or Streetwise along with it, just to guarantee that you can actually keep the item after you use it. It is a very fast self-heal, but if you want to actually keep the item, then you do need a little boost of efficiency to make sure that the item sticks with you. And then there is Adrenaline, which is easily one of my favorite perks in the game. It is essentially a free heal and a sprint burst at the end of the game once all the generators are powered. Not only can it take you from the injured to the healthy state, but it can also heal you up from the dying state. So this is powerful not only for taking chases at the end of the game, but also if you're slugged, obviously. Or especially what I like is if you're in a situation with 1-2 to two gens left in the game, you can completely ignore getting a heal from your teammates or self-healing because you have that guaranteed heal at the end of the game. All you need to do is power through and finish the generator to get it. So it's just a really nice and consistent heal at the end of the game and it can really turn things around for your team. And lastly, I want to mention Leader and Resilience. While these perks don't actually heal you or allow you to heal yourself, they do make it faster for other players to heal you. So obviously, if you're able to find your teammates, you're able to get that heal off a little bit quicker. So there is some definite value to using those two perks. I especially like Resilience because it also gives you, while you're injured, a 9% bonus to doing basically anything, including working on gens, hex totems, or even vaulting windows. So those are a couple perks to also keep in mind. As far as my personal preference, I probably would stick to Adrenaline, the Aura Reading perks, and Inner Strength. Those are just my personal favorites and the ones that I have the most fun playing with. But before I wrap up, I also want to say that you honestly don't really even need to run any of these perks if you don't want to. While being able to heal yourself is obviously very strong, there are definitely ways to play around it. The first thing to note that is pretty obvious is generally if you want to play without a self-heal, the rule of thumb is that when you're actually healthy, you can play way more aggressive. You can go for making plays that you should not be making when you're injured. And then obviously when you are injured, that's the time where you want to play a little bit more passive and make sure that you're not getting easily downed. That would probably be the time where you want to go do objectives, whether that's finding a hex totem or working on a generator. Another thing that I want to say is just keep in mind that any objective is going to be kind of like a congregation point for other survivors. 
Obviously the most reliable of these is an actual hook survivor because if you go and unhook them then you know that there's going to be another survivor there that can heal you. However again it's not always the smartest thing to do to go for unhooking a survivor if you're injured you have to be safe about it and make sure that the killer isn't watching you. But obviously generators are another great place to find other survivors. That is the primary objective of the game so you can expect or at least hope to find some of your teammates on generators at some point in the game so it's always good to keep an ear out for generators that are being worked on because obviously then you have a survivor to go to and get your heal off and then if you want to you can always check chests there is some rng factor going on with that unless you're running pharmacy but you have a chance to actually get a med kit and get a self heal without finding another survivor and the last thing that i want to mention is that actually in some situations and when you're playing against certain killers it's actually not to your advantage to heal for instance if you're going against the plague it's basically impossible to heal if you're going against the legion the fact that they can easily put you in deep wound and are often using sloppy butcher makes it very difficult to heal and not always to your advantage and of course there is a decent amount of killers that can do one shots they can either expose you or use chainsaws or something to that effect to hit you down with one hit in which case obviously healing is just a big waste of time so anyways these are just some things to keep in mind you don't have to run self-care you don't even have to run a self-heal just i want people to feel like they can play different perk setups and not always feel obligated to play with self-care which i think especially for newer players they might trend toward but now that i've gotten all that out of the way i also want to defend self-care a little bit it is absolutely not a terrible perk again especially for newer players if you're just learning the game and you want to run self-care by itself i don't think it's a bad idea and while i personally probably won't be running it that often there is actually one situation where I think it's pretty viable and that is because it'll actually increase the efficiency of self-healing with medkits up to 20%. So again, I mentioned those green medkits and those heals are insanely fast. And if you wanted to run a build that was just insanely fast heals that are very efficient, then self-care can actually work its way in there and be pretty decent. Maybe running something like streetwise, self-care, botany knowledge, and resilience, that would actually be a very very fast heal and very efficient so that's just something to consider so anyways i hope that this didn't end up sounding like a rant or a lecture about why you shouldn't be running self-care it's not a bad perk not at all but if you do feel like it's a little bit of a crutch for you if you just can't go without using it which might be the case especially for some newer players then hopefully this video gave you some ideas and ways that you can branch out and ideally some other ways to have fun with the game when you're playing as survivor but anyways that is it for me for right now Thank you so much for watching. If you're here listening right now, then you're one of the good ones. And if this is your first time visiting the channel and you'd like to see more content like this and more Dead by Daylight content, then I encourage you to hit subscribe and then also ring the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming out. Also, more recently, I've been streaming on Twitch, generally on Fridays, but I will be branching out to other days eventually. So if you'd like to check that out and come hang out, you are more than welcome. It's a lot like YouTube, except it's just a little bit cozier and more interactive. But anyways, that is it for me. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you again soon.